Okay, it's now the 29th. Uh, the clouds are a little bit more overcast today. This is Sunshine Cave, and in this cave we can hope to find hanging gardens. It's amazing how this looks like somebody from Hollywood designed it. Uh, you don't even see one continuous tube, it's like a series of, of spaces broken by those uh, vertical um, profiles that go from left to right or whatever. Again, you can see this um, profile of levels as though it was a phasing down of the flow or something. Here you have to be careful here. You way down at the end you can see some light down there so that's where we're going. I'm gonna f switch to the day night shot. Okay, here it's a little bit difficult, not much, but you can see where the after flows or the last bits of the flow uh, continue down, down here is kind of a sludge. You can see the lines in it, the flow lines. Oh, it looks like that came off the ceiling, so I may be wrong. That may well have come off the ceiling just like that pizza's about to do. Okay, so here's one of the first breakthroughs. In other words, why it collapses. Oh, but here they've given us some nice walking spaces. It's amazing in all my 65 years, a lot of it traveling around this part of the country. I never had a clue about this national monument. Not sure if that's a reference to the hanging gardens or not, but we'll keep going further down. Obviously, another breakthrough above. <clears throat> Here, another slab falling off of the ceiling, it looks like. We can tell because of those drips, frozen drips, if you will. You can see water dripping down here. I don't know how far we're supposed to go. Ho ho. What I mean is it gets scary. down here see what I can see I don't feel like crawling through there no, it just keeps going on if you're a real cave enthusiast this could be fun this must be the hanging gardens because I didn't see anything elsewhere and I wasn't going to go through the small opening Maybe if I had someone here to bolster my courage, I might, but... Here we get another perspective of these flow levels and the curve of the cave walls. This is Natural Bridge. The brochure, I believe, says Natural Bridge Cave, so perhaps there's a way down and there's a cave. My guess is that the Natural Bridge is what we drive over right here. Although those three cracks in the pavement are somewhat ominous. Again, the proximity of these cinder cones. So far, it looks like what we've seen all the way here, just uh, collapsed uh, giant lava tube. 
But look at that large rock, I wonder if when these ceilings collapsed on these tubes, was it a loud thunderous noise or was it just kind of a few rocks at a time? Now along this little walkway, which is not an official walkway, leads to this little cave area. You can just imagine uh, whatever animals might live in here, or at least spend the night when it's rainy and stormy or snowy. You can see little footprints in there. It might be mice living down in that, or my kangaroo mouse. And it looks like there's little bits of moisture like down inside there. You can see it up the right hand corner. They may be able to use that moisture. And maybe bigger animals come in and set up over there when it's really stormy. Although I don't see any scat here to indicate that. Another small cave here. But you can get a sense of the size of what this dome might have been like when it was made. 60 feet across, perhaps, at least. That, of course, is Mr. Pika, who doesn't seem terribly bothered by my presence. Also, if I do the little click-click with my lips, that's a signal for danger, and he's gone. With a remnant of color and yellow flowers. Those seeds probably offer that little pika. One more form of food. What's interesting is pikas will build little haystacks of straw and uh, grasses, but there are not much in the way of grasses here, unless he traipses up on top there, which he may very well do. And that becomes his food store for the winter. Look at the speed at which that chipmunk moves. <laughs> Suggested that the pika may be extinct within this century or earlier, I forget what the time frame was, simply because <clears throat> temperatures are rising and the cold cool areas that it needs to live in um, will no longer be accessible to it as habitats it can survive in i.e. it won't have the foodstuff to survive at the cooler temperatures it's forced up to cooler elevations it's forced up to another giant cave entrance it all seems redundant probably to the viewer more so than anyone else um, but it's like it's every new thing is just one more tantalizing possibility. What will you discover? In the micro world of the pica, perhaps all of these different plants that we, I see here um, offer at different times of year some kind of foodstuff. And maybe even in the, in the snows of winter they're accessible. Either the snow pushes them down or they can be pulled down. Another opening, it's the other side of that one I just looked at. It's hard for me to imagine when I look at those or I look at the smaller ones I saw a few moments ago and cannot imagine that small Aboriginal types would not have figured out a way to, for example, close them over temporarily. Uh, and, and with animal skins so that they had a warm and secure place. I, I, I can only imagine they must have. But I wonder if it isn't possible that all that evidence is buried underneath. The rubble that's fallen off the roofs. <laughs>